Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. If you haven't already checked out the InfoWars.com backslash reporter dash contest site, do so and become a reporter here at InfoWars. The cash prizes are $5,000. Uh, we're looking for a male reporter and a female reporter. And in order to speak your mind about topics such as Agenda 21, you can attempt to join us here at InfoWars Nightly News. Now, speaking of Agenda 21, we are joined by Rosa Corey. She is an executive director of the Post Sustainability Institute. The uh, Post Sustainability Institute was established to study the effects of Agenda 21 and uh, communitarianism on liberty. And if that word is new to you, uh, we will get the definition here shortly with this little demonstration with Rosa Corey. Thanks for joining us, Rosa. Great to be with you. Okay, I want to start out, obviously, with the definition of communitarianism. Wow. Well, communitarianism is a social and political philosophy that's behind United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. So it's really important to understand that it balances the individual's rights with the rights of the community. And, you know, we were born with our individual rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But the rights of the community are completely undelineated and not defined. They can change at any time and be taken away or granted by your government. So this is really important to understand that communitarianism says that you have to balance the rights of the individual, that selfish individual you, with the rights of the community. And in this case, it could be either your local community or the global community. So when we're thinking about that, we think about um, a great visual for that is uh, two glasses, two clear glasses. And one is a clear glass of water and that is your constitutional republic. Those are your individual rights. In the other class, you've got milk, and that is a, a, a um, communitarian state, which would be like communist Russia or China or Nazi Germany. Those are communitarian states. So you want to balance those. So you're going to take a clear glass pitcher, put it in between them on the table, and take those two glasses and balance them. You're balancing the individual's rights with the rights of the community. What happens to that water? Got milk? That's it, it, what happens. What we have is water milk. Yeah, you've got milk, really, because you have lost your individual's rights. Individual rights, they are subsumed into and subordinate to the rights of the community. And now you have lost your rights. The individual is considered to be a threat to the global community. Well, that certainly doesn't taste like freedom to me. <laughs> That's but right. I'm only That's assuming because I'm not going to taste that. Uh, okay. I've had enough watered down milk from local grocery store. Uh, let's also uh, get into how the property scam works, how the property taxes work on uh, regional uh, regionalization and uh, sustainable development. Great. Well, I do go into this a lot in my book, and um, the way that this, you know, obviously, when you're looking at Agenda 21, sustainable development, it has to be funded, and it is. This is a global plan, but it is implemented locally in your town, in your county, in your state, in your country, wherever you live in the in the world. So they use your either your property tax dollars your transportation tax your tra transportation tax dollars or your income tax dollars whatever they've got they give government grants to your community to your town or with redevelopment they have rezoned huge areas of your town to the preferred development model for agenda 21 which is smart growth high density development stack and pack ground floor retail with several stories of uh, residential above doesn't pencil out it doesn't make money because nobody really wants it in these little towns and communities. So it has to get subsidized with your tax dollars. And your government uses redevelopment, which is a way to take your property tax dollars 
And instead of using them for what you think they should be used for, like uh, your parks, your schools, your roads, your hospitals, your police and fire, that money goes to a redevelopment agency that gives it to private developers to develop. What? Yes, it does. That's where your money's going. That's one reason why so many towns and cities are bankrupt now, because the money was diverted. It was supposed to be used for your services. And then you that get blighted property. And then how does blight, how, how do they work the blighted property into the scam? Well, this is how they do it. Because these areas, it might be a huge portion of your city. Some cities up to 80 or 90% of the entire city is declared to be blighted. It's identified as being an area that no one would invest in unless property tax dollars were given to those people as an incentive. And that's how they get away with it, see? They take for 30 years, they take your property tax dollars, they indebt themselves to bond brokers, and that's where it's at. The bond brokers take your tax money, they have indebted your city, so your city's gonna sink under this huge burden of debt unless people build these huge developments and then it generates supposedly more tax dollars. But now there is no, des no desire for it, no um, demand for it, and that's why your money is getting pounded down that drain to develop all that bankrupt retail and uh, many stories of residential that's sitting there vacant now in the middle of most cities in the entire U.S. And of course we have to go down and speak out at our city council, but you get into detail in the book about the Delphi technique that's and, right. uh, and how it's used. Uh, could you speak about that a little bit? Absolutely, because you know what? Hey, you didn't just wake up and find out that you live in a, in a dictatorship. Your government does not want you to be aware of what's going on. I know this is not news to you. So uh, what they do, what, what your government has done, is uh, hired consultants that are experts in this technique, which was developed by the Rand Corporation in the 1960s. It's called the Delphi Technique. And it's used to bring groups of people to what gives them the illusion that they have input and that they're being listened to, but it brings them to a predetermined outcome that was going to be uh, decided that way no matter what they said. So this is when you get invited to a visioning meeting or a workshop or a charrette, and you're invited to this meeting. You go on down there. You think you're really having some input, but really you're not. And this is designed to direct large groups of people to a predetermined outcome so that you think you're influencing your government. And so when your tax dollars are being used, when your uh, zoning in your town is being changed for to um, develop this desired uh, building style for the new world order, which is smart growth, you think you have an input on that, but really you don't. You're being told it's your plan, but in fact it is not. And yes, it's up to you to go down there to your city council, to your planning department, to those meetings, and you stand up and you tell them, this is not your plan. We're doing it all over the United States and all over the world because the plan is the same no matter where you are in the world. New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK, the United States, it's all the same plan. And your book gets into your fight, your own personal fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we sued to stop a huge redevelopment project and uh, we sued it, um, I raised about half a million dollars. We, uh, it was a huge project, we stopped it for three years. We did lose, but uh, we went on appeal, we lost again, but we managed to stop that project until the economy collapsed and they were not able to build all of that smart growth and steal our property tax dollars for 30 to 45 years in my city. And you can do it too, I really encourage people to uh, get my book and or go on our website, Democrats Against UN Agenda 21.com, and check it out. Well, the UN has been a focus of our show tonight, and it is a many tentacled octopus. Are there mm. other aspects about the UN that you've discovered from uh, your own research on Agenda 21? Uh, it's, it's global uh, tentacles as far as. Uh, the, uh, well, earlier we were speaking about the War Powers Resolution and how the UN has pretty much claimed the American military as their own. 
to do their dirty work. Is there anything else in your research that you've discovered about the UN that's outside of Agenda 21? Well, you know, it's, it's almost, it's not what is United Nations Agenda 21, it's what isn't. And you are gonna look long and hard to find something that isn't because this is a global plan and it's implemented locally, but it is a plan for inventory and control of all aspects of the world, all aspects of land, water, and, and human and pl human plants, animals, everything. Everything that you impact and that impacts you is being monitored, controlled, and inventory. So when you see, for instance, in your town, uh, a regional meeting, or when you see a bike boulevard, or when you see that your um, uh, neighborhood association is not going to let you run for neighborhood president unless you've been vetted by the board first. Amazingly enough, this is all United Nations Agenda 21, sustainable development. And it's in your universities, it's in your uh, planning departments, it's all over your government. And that's why you have to get sharp at identifying it because it's not called Agenda 21. And in fact, the American Planning Association has published documents and they had a communications boot camp for planners to teach them how to deal with us because we are waking up and getting active. And this is worldwide. People are recognizing that UN Agenda 21 comes under many different names and that you have to you know, get sharp and identify it and fight it where you are. Fight it locally. Well, I'm sure we have plenty of Delphi meetings going on here in Austin. We've got plenty of growth, of smart growth going on in uh, the center of our town. How would somebody like me go about uh, infiltrating? Let's say I have other members here, and of course there's going to be one person who's going to represent the Delphi technique. Do I go in there and uh, it, it, would it be a good strategy to go in there and just openly say, I am here, I'm against you, I know this is Agenda 21, or is there another technique that uh, our listeners could use? Well, uh, you know, I, I believe it's a big tent and there's room for everybody, and however you get to it is great. But in my book, I do describe how to anti-Delphi a meeting. And these are very tightly regulated meetings where the facilitator has been trained in the Delphi technique, and basically, they don't allow dissent. That's the most important thing to know about communitarianism. It gives the illusion of buy-in by the community, but there's no allowing for dissent, and that's you. You are the dissenters. You're the resistance. So when you go into those meetings, I've got this in the back of my book. There's 20 pages on what you can do in this book. So um, when you go to the back of the book, it's in there. It says uh, basically what you do, go into the meeting with your group, however many people you have. You've met in advance. You know, you understand the purpose of the meeting and why you are there. It may be a regional plan meeting, whatever. You go in there. You don't identify yourself with your real name. You don't identify your, the people you're with. You never acknowledge that you are together. You don't speak to each other. While you're in that meeting, you are there to stop that meeting and to reveal that it is not your idea. It's not your plan. So there's a way to do it. You go in. You, uh, there's a series of, uh, of questions that you ask. There's a way to reveal that it is not uh, your plan. You, uh, you uh, move into that meeting and you sit with all, all of the different at the different tables, or you sit around that auditorium. You don't um, you don't identify yourself as being with the group that you're with, and you ask questions. You say, "Excuse me, but it doesn't look to me like this plan is something that uh, we got a ch that we have a chance to really have an impression on. Why is it that your timeline shows the adoption of this plan, even though you're saying that I have some input? Is there any way to stop this plan? That's a fabulous question to ask because it completely stops the the uh, the entire meeting right there. When you say, "Is there anything that we can do to stop this plan?" Because the truth is there is not. And so you're told that you, the way you live now is business as usual and that that's no good, that you have to take a planned future, that that's the choice that you're supposed to pick. And if you want clean air and water and you want jobs, then you're going to have to go along to get along with their plan. So I show you how to stop those meetings how to reveal that they are not your plan. And mainly what you're doing, you're not waking up the facilitator. 
they're never going to move. They're not going to change their minds. It's the audience that you're reaching, your fellow citizens. That's who you're talking to. Yep, and there's plenty of us. There's plenty of us. It's true. Uh, there's over 300 million of us, and there's only a few of them. So in closing, Rosen, I, I want to thank you again for joining us. Is there Thanks. anything uh, that you want to add to uh, the future of uh, Agenda 21? What, what can we see in the next, well, by the end of 2012? Is there anything that you can forecast uh, that we may be uh, seeing here very soon? Well, what I'm really hoping to see is a worldwide movement of people just like ourselves who are going to get up and say, absolutely not. We will not stand for this. This is not the way free people live. We will not be delphied. We will not be moved like this. We will not go along to get along. These are, we will shut this down. We will speak out together. We will stop it. If we don't do it, you have an opportunity now. There's a window of opportunity now. We need to work together. It's not a left-right thing. Don't be misled by that. It's not Republican, Democrat, or left-right. Join together. Fight this together. This is something we can win, but we have to speak out and we must get active, all of us, right now, together. Well, thank you, Rosa, for your fight for liberty, and uh, thanks for joining us again, and we will talk to you very soon. Thank you. All right, folks, that's going to do it for the nightly news. Again, we want to thank Rosa Corey for joining us and tending to those brush fires in the minds of many men and women in this country. This book is available at Infowars.com, at the store at Infowars.com. Pick one up, pass it around, pick another one up, pass it around, and the name of the book is Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21, an excellent read, a quick read, and that's going to do it. Thank you for... Uh, Joining us here on InfoWars Nightly News, I want to thank Alex Jones for being the man that he is and giving me the opportunity tonight to host the news. And we will see you again, Lord willing, on Monday. Have a good evening. Rights, individual rights, they are subsumed into and subordinate to the rights of the community. And now you have lost your rights. The individual is considered to be a threat to the global community. Well, that certainly doesn't taste like freedom to me. <laughs> That's but right. I'm only That's assuming because I'm not going to taste that. Uh, okay. I've had enough watered down milk from local grocery store. Uh, Let's also uh, get into how the property scam works, how the property taxes work on uh, regional, uh, regionalization and uh, sustainable development. Great. Well, I do go into this a lot in my book. And um, the way that this, you know, obviously, when you're looking at Agenda 21, sustainable development, it has to be funded. And it is, this is a global plan, but it is implemented locally in your town, in your county, in your state, in your country, wherever you live in the, in the world. So they use your, either your property tax dollars, your transportation tax, your tra transportation institute was established to study the effects of Agenda 21 and uh, communitarianism on liberty. And if that word is new to you, uh, we will get the definition here shortly with this little demonstration with Rosa Corey. Thanks for joining us, Rosa. Great to be with you. Okay, I want to start out, obviously, with the definition of communitarianism. Wow. Well, communitarianism is a social and political philosophy that's behind United Nations Agenda 21 Sustainable Development. So it's really important to understand that it balances the individual's rights with the rights of the community. And, you know, we were born with our individual rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
but the rights of the community are completely undelineated and not defined. They can change at any time and be taken away or granted by your government. So this is really important to understand that communitarianism says that you have to balance the rights of the individual, that selfish individual tax dollars or your income tax dollars, whatever they've got. They give government grants to your community, to your town, or with redevelopment, they have rezoned huge areas of your town to the preferred development model for Agenda 21, which is smart growth, high density development, stack and pack, ground floor retail with several stories of uh, residential above. Doesn't pencil out, it doesn't make money because nobody really wants it in these little towns and communities. So it has to get subsidized with your tax dollars and your government uses redevelopment which is a way to take your property tax dollars and instead of using them for what you think they should be used for, like uh, your parks, your schools, your roads, your hospitals, your police and fire, that money goes to a redevelopment agency that gives it to private developers to develop. What? Yes, it does. That's where your money's going. That's one reason why so many towns and cities are bankrupt now because the money was diverted that was supposed to Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. If you haven't already checked out the InfoWars.com backslash reporter dash contest site, do so and become a reporter here at InfoWars. The cash prizes are $5,000. Uh, we're looking for a male reporter and a female reporter. And in order to speak your mind about topics such as Agenda 21, you can attempt to join us here at InfoWars Nightly News. Now, speaking of Agenda 21, we are joined by Rosa Corey. She is an executive director of the Post Sustainability Institute, the uh, Post Sustainability Institute. You with the rights of the community. And in this case, it could be either your local community or the global community. So when we're thinking about that, we think about um, a great visual for that is uh, two glasses, two clear glasses. And one is a clear glass of water. And that is your constitutional republic. Those are your individual rights. In the other glass, you've got milk. And that is a, a, a um, communitarian state, which would be like communist Russia or China or Nazi Germany. Those are communitarian states. So you want to balance those. So you're going to take a clear glass pitcher, put it in between them on the table, and take those two glasses and balance them. You're balancing the individual's rights with the rights of the community. What happens to that water? Got milk? That's it, it, what happens. What we have is water milk. Yeah, you've got milk, really, because you have lost your individual's 